Consider this. A chimpanzee can rip off a human's arm and beat him with it. A chimp can kill a gorilla. They are constantly doing so. Thus, we must not underestimate the strength of a wild human. In fact, we would have little chance against any ancient humans. Compared to Neanderthals, we are mere infants and have little chance of defeating them in physical combat. Though we have the intelligence to outwit Neanderthals, we represent an existential threat to them. This is because they are not our brothers or cousins. They are something completely different for which we have no modern comparison. In fact, Earth was once a planet of the apes, a place where intelligent and robust human creatures roamed around, interacted, fought, loved, and died together before all other human species vanished and Homo sapiens ascended to the throne of the hominids. Ancient humans likely shared a significant number of our destructive instincts as well if they shared so many of our creative instincts. There are profound human origins to this territoriality. Chimpanzees, our closest relatives, also experience intense territorial conflicts. A behavior that is strikingly similar to human warfare is the routine ganging up of male chimps to attack and kill males from rival bands. This suggests that cooperative aggression originated in the common ancestor of chimpanzees and humans millions of years ago. If so, all ancient humans would have inherited these same tendencies toward cooperative aggression. Moreover, aggressive territorial expansion is also a good evolutionary strategy. Predatory land mammals, particularly pack hunters, are territorial. Ancient humans were cooperative big game hunters, similar to lions, wolves and homo sapiens. The overpopulation of human predators, who are situated at the top of the food chain, results in conflict over hunting grounds due to the fact that they have few predators of their own. Archaeologists have recently concluded from Neanderthaloid remains that their bodies were severely traumatized, particularly with head and neck fractures or injuries. Researchers concluded that Neanderthals lived more violent lives than modern Homo sapiens. Despite having brains similar to ours, Neanderthals most likely exhibited animalistic ferocity. In contrast, the modern human brain can work against us in battle because many animals struggle even after being injured, whereas modern humans typically collapse immediately due to the psychological strain of injury. Our modern human brains tell us to flee rather than fight. However, in any situation, the Neanderthal will fight to the death just like a wild animal. Although evidence suggests that there were many ancient and primitive humans, we know far more about Neanderthals than any other human species. For example, Homo heidelbergensis, or Homo rhodesiensis, also known as the African Neanderthal, had a larger average brain capacity than modern humans, used sophisticated tools, and established their own species classifications. Some African Heidelbergensis specimens were described as a gorilla head on a human body, with males standing up to seven feet tall and having a strong frame. They were also much more robust than modern humans, and they had a proclivity for cannibalism. Despite being the last surviving hominins, modern humans were not the physically strongest humans. Many fossil bones show that some populations of African Heidelbergensis were seven-foot-tall giants who lived between 500,000 and 300,000 years ago, when human body size and mass were at their peak. This was due to a colder climate, combined with increased hunting efficiency, as they focused on only the largest animals, such as massive straight-tusk elephants, which provided more protein and fat than modern humans could possibly imagine. These super-archaic humans appear to have separated from modern human ancestors before Neanderthals did. Their genetic material contains numerous instances of so-called ghost DNA in modern human populations. This implies that some DNA from these extinct populations may have been beneficial to the current population by performing useful functions. For example, some West African groups derive up to 19% of their genes from an enigmatic ancient human who most likely became extinct around 50,000 years ago. Some of these genes might even improve athletic performance. These humans would have been an absolute nightmare on the American football gridiron. However, Cro-Magnons were the tallest and most intelligent humans to have ever lived on Earth. Males may have averaged six feet in height and had a brain capacity of more than 1,700 cubic centimeters. 
Among all human species, the Cro-Magnon has the largest cranial capacity. They are therefore thought to have been more intelligent than modern man. Cro-Magnons were powerfully built and strong. Their bodies were generally heavy and solid with large muscles. And when compared to previous human species, they could run faster and throw with greater accuracy. Some characteristics of the first Cro-Magnon specimens are similar to those of ancient Australians and Neanderthals. The Cro-Magnons were anatomically similar to modern Europeans, despite being more robust and having larger brains, prominent brow ridges and larger teeth. Studies of their anatomy and genes show that other ancient humans, such as Neanderthals, were at least twice as strong as modern humans. Dangerous hunters with superhuman athletic prowess, Neanderthals had well-developed muscles, quick reflexes and strong arms and legs that allowed them to outperform the most accomplished athletes. For example, Ray Lewis was a beast on the NFL gridiron with a height of 5 feet 11 inches and a weight of 250 pounds, possibly reflecting the power and strength of Neanderthals. He was known for his freakish strength and aggression, which allowed him to dominate much larger opponents while manhandling smaller ones. However, Lewis would be no match for the speed, power and explosion of a Neanderthaloid human. A few Neanderthal specimens with a height approaching six feet debunk the myth that they were all short-statured. Most likely much taller Neanderthals existed during the 300,000 years they roamed Western Eurasia. They also had a much stronger skeleton, a face and skull that could withstand much more punishment, and muscle density that only a modern human on steroids could achieve. Based on 26 specimens, one study estimated the average lean body mass of male Neanderthals to be 180 pounds. These figures indicate that the average lean body mass of Neanderthals was significantly higher than that of modern humans. As a result, the average Neanderthal man could develop significantly more muscle. Neanderthal pectoral muscles could generate nearly twice as much upper body strength and were twice the size of modern humans. The few fossils and complete genomes that we have show that Neanderthals had incredible strength and genetic advantages. Their extremely thick neck muscles would have made it difficult to place them in a headlock and would have supported their heavier skulls. Take the strength and power of a 6 foot 5 inch 275 pound NFL defensive end and pack it into a Neanderthal's 5 foot 8 inch 180 pound body. From there, incorporate a gorilla like muscle twitch. A caveman would rip an NFL linebacker apart, including NFL legend Ray Lewis. Because of their resemblance to Neanderthals, early humans with strong, powerful bones are commonly referred to as Neanderthaloid. Neanderthals were once thought to be uncivilized subhumans but they were elevated to human status when modern humans were discovered to have Neanderthal genes. Nonetheless, anatomical evidence suggests that Neanderthals were far stronger than modern humans. Neanderthal anatomy differed from modern human anatomy in that it had a more robust build and unique morphological traits, particularly in the cranium, which gradually evolved into more derived traits, especially in isolated geographical areas. This strong build suited Neanderthals, who lived in cold climates throughout Europe. The glacial adaptation hypothesis is most commonly used to explain the Neanderthal body form. In these circumstances, encounter and ambush hunting would have been preferable to pursuit hunting, resulting in greater muscular power and sprinting speed rather than endurance. Paleoecological data show that the woodland environment was less cold than glacial conditions, in such cases, encounter and ambush hunting would have been the preferred method, resulting in greater sprint capacity and muscular power than endurance. As a result, Neanderthal's highly muscular body form is thought to have evolved in response to woodland hunting conditions rather than the cold. The Neanderthal pelvis and lower center of gravity compared to Homo sapiens provided incredible balance, similar to that of a gorilla. Though sometimes exaggerated, the image of the Neanderthal as a squat, chiseled brute is accurate. They had broad hips and shoulders, large hands and feet, and strong muscular bodies. Their wide pelvis, bone density, and thick areas of muscular attachment all indicate that they are very muscular. Although they walked completely upright, unlike the popular belief that Neanderthals were stooped over like gorillas, the comparison to gorillas may not be incorrect given their strength and reflexes.
More importantly, the number of known genomic variants associated with endurance, power and strength athletes has increased recently. Surprisingly, one study discovered that compared to modern humans, Neanderthal genomes contain more gene variants associated with power sports. In fact, the majority of the 39 power-related gene variants discovered by researchers in modern humans and Neanderthals are more common in Neanderthals than in modern humans. This is consistent with power-related phenotypes being more common in Neanderthal man than in modern humans. Furthermore, it is likely that Neanderthals carried additional genes associated with power and endurance that are absent in modern human populations. Furthermore, skeletal and genetic studies show that ancient man would have been a formidable opponent, consuming copious amounts of red meat and protein-rich bone marrow. Strength. The ability to exert significant forces on external objects was most likely a key component of Neanderthal adaptation to Ice Age Eurasia. Robust Neanderthal post-cranial skeletons reveal a body capable of producing and resisting powerful forces. Ancient man's bones were up to twice as thick as modern man's, and if muscular attachment points are any indication, they were exceptionally strong. As top predators and extreme hunters, Neanderthals strengthened their arms through this activity. Neanderthal bone fractures appeared to be quite common. The frequency of such injuries is comparable to that of modern rodeo professionals, implying regular interaction with large, aggressive animals. Archaeologists have discovered that many Neanderthals had large forearms, most likely as a result of a life spent killing and dismembering woolly mammoths and straight-tusked elephants. Their muscles were so strong that the force applied caused their forearm bones to bend. According to a recent study, the remains of a 50-000-year-old Russian Neanderthal indicate a hormonal status unlike anything seen in humans today, implying that Neanderthals were heavily pumped up on male hormones. Androgens, like steroids, have well-known side effects, including increased aggression. Indeed, scientists believe Neanderthals exhibited a strong androgenic phenotype, which means they had high levels of male hormones. The researchers claimed that Neanderthals had unique biomechanical adaptations and a hormonal condition that differed from any hormonal condition found in modern humans, whether normal or pathological. Living in a cold northern climate, eating primarily meat-based diets and genetic inheritance could all have contributed to the onset of this condition. Neanderthaloid post-cranial skeletons are generally strong, indicating that the body was capable of producing and resisting significant forces. Still, the fracture pattern and lack of throwing weapons indicate that Neanderthals hunted by jumping on their prey and stabbing or wrestling it to the ground. Unlike shooting prey from a safe distance, such as woolly mammoths, Neanderthal men would make direct contact with the animal, jabbing long, thick spears straight into its flesh. This is understandable given that Neanderthals could withstand more punishment and were typically heavier and more muscular than modern humans. Thus, an average Neanderthal would undoubtedly have a power advantage over his Homo sapiens opponent. One study concluded that lifestyle, genes, climate and diet all played a role in shaping Neanderthal muscular physiques. Neanderthals built strong leg, trapezius, deltoid and triceps muscles by dragging hundreds of pounds of meat long distances to their caves, often up steep mountainsides. According to the study, male Neanderthals had much larger biceps muscles than their modern counterparts, as measured using standardized methods. Male Neanderthals had 25% larger biceps than the average modern human. Although it may not appear to be much, Male Neanderthals were able to produce forearm flexor tension approximately 126% higher than the average modern man. These approximations indicate that Neanderthal arms were up to 96% stronger than modern humans. Otherwise, their arms were more than twice as powerful. A comparison of the size of muscle attachment sites and mechanical advantage or leverage in the upper limbs of Neanderthals early modern humans and recent human samples reveals that Neanderthals had significantly greater upper body strength. Upper body strength was most likely critical for hunting success when using hand delivery weapons at close range. Additionally, more strength likely increased the variety of prey species the Neanderthals could hunt. 
The archaeological record corroborates that the lives of ancient humans were anything but tranquil. Consequently, prehistoric humans frequently exhibit skull trauma. Neanderthals were neither pacifists nor substandard warriors. However, cave paintings, carvings and musical instruments suggest a far more perilous capability, a sophisticated ability to communicate and think abstractly. Our most potent weapon may have been our capacity to deceive, manipulate, plan, strategize and cooperate. In the end, it is probable that we simply became more adept at battle than they were. Nonetheless, for the majority of scientific history, we have presented the narrative of Neanderthals in a way that makes us appear superior. We were smarter, less savage, and better suited physically to inherit the Earth than the Neanderthal. This story gives me hope for the future, because if Neanderthals are our equals and still die out, what stops nature from being just as cruel to modern humans? And with that, we leave you to contemplate the mysteries of our shared human history. Continue to be curious and ask questions. Until next time, please explore our channel's other videos, share them and subscribe. Thank you. Take care.